How can we find all prime numbers? Well, there's a nice pattern for discovering primes that I would like to show you. Imagine we had a slot machine that was tilted slightly to the left. As we insert a coin, with the help of gravity, it is always going to land on the lowest point. The first number it lands on is 2, and the machine instantly eliminates multiples of 2. So 2 is the very first prime number. 1 is not considered prime because if we eliminated multiples of 1, then all numbers would be eliminated. The next lowest point that has not been crossed out is 3. So 3 is the next prime number. Every time a coin lands on a number, the machine will automatically eliminate multiples of the number. Let's generalize these eliminations. It's important to have the numbers lined up in rows of 10. You can see the columns containing the even numbers ending in 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 contain no prime numbers as we've already seen, except for the number 2. But notice the column containing multiples of 5 has no prime numbers except for the number 5. So the only columns that will contain primes are the columns with numbers that end in 1, 3, 7, and 9. This will make the task of finding prime numbers easier because we just eliminated 6 columns. To find the prime numbers, let's create a list of numbers ending only in 1, 3, 7, and 9. And we'll call this the 1379 list. So the 1379 list will provide us with all the prime numbers in existence, except for 2 and 5. Now we can focus on a method of eliminating numbers that are not prime. First of all, 1 is not prime, because it only has one unique factor. The next number is 3. 3 is prime because it has two unique factors, which are 1 and 3. If we take 3 and multiply it with every number on the 1379 list, it's going to eliminate the numbers that are not prime. For example, starting with 3, 3 times 3 equals 9 is not prime, 3 times 7 equals 21 is not prime, 3 times 9 equals 27 is not prime. As we keep multiplying every number by 3, each time we are eliminating a number on the list. Let's say we have multiplied by 3 infinitely many times and have removed all the corresponding numbers that are not prime. If we take a look at each column, we can see a pattern of how the numbers are eliminated. Every third number is eliminated. And this is an important observation. Since every third number was eliminated, we actually didn't really need to multiply every number by 3. We just needed to find the first eliminations from which the pattern begins. Since this was done with the prime number 3, will this technique work with other prime numbers? The next prime number is 7. If we take 7 and multiply it with every number on the 1379 list, it's going to eliminate the numbers that are not prime, but let's use this faster elimination method. We just need to multiply 7 by the first 4 numbers, which are 3, 7, 9, and 11. So, 7 times 3 is 21, 7 times 7 is 49, 7 times 9 is 63, and 7 times 11 is 77. Now, according to this method, we eliminate every 7th number going down each column, starting at the first elimination. So, do we really know that this actually works? Well, we can check the work. Let's multiply every number on the list by 7, and now we can see that every 7th number is, in fact, eliminated. So this pattern will continue eliminating numbers on the list for every prime number we complete this method with. Notice that the next number is 9. We actually found 9 not to be prime. We can go ahead and use this technique, but doing so will result in finding a pattern of numbers that have actually already been eliminated. So we can skip 9 and move on to 11. Since we are continually eliminating numbers on the 1379 list, how do we know for sure that a number is definitely prime and won't be eliminated later by this method? Well, let's say that we have finished the elimination method with prime number 7. It turns out that if we take the next prime number, which is 11, and we square it, 11 squared is 121, every number less than 121 that has not been eliminated is a prime number. So this is the pattern for eventually finding all prime numbers. You can keep on searching for primes by repeating this method as much as you would like. 
Now, you may have been wondering, since we are eliminating more and more numbers on the list with every prime number, it seems that we will eventually discover all prime numbers. Well, let me actually have somebody explain why there may actually be infinitely many primes. Oh, thank you. That was a nice explanation for finding primes. But I'm here to tell you not to waste your time. However wonderful you think your method is, I can prove to you that you will never find all prime numbers. It is a fruitless endeavor just as trying to lick your elbow. Believe me, I've tried it. Let me show you my proof that I have just discovered. Let's say that the prime numbers you have discovered so far are 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11. Let's call these P1, P2, P3, P4, and, you guessed it, P5. If there were infinitely many primes, then we would have many more P's to count now, wouldn't we? In math, only one of the following can be true. There are infinitely many primes, or there are a finite amount of primes. This means that if we find one to be false, then the other must be true and vice versa. So let's say that there are a finite amount of primes, and P1, P2, P3, P4, and the beloved P5 are the only prime numbers in existence. Remember how the other guy was multiplying primes together to eliminate numbers that were not prime? This means that P1, P2 is not prime, P4, P5 is not prime, and even P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5 are definitely not prime. We can do something as crazy as add 1 to the end and say that that is also not a prime number. In math, every whole number can be divided evenly by a prime number that shares the fact of life. This means that one of our five prime numbers must divide P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 plus 1. But if we go through every prime number and try to divide it, we are always left with a remainder of 1 and none of them divides it evenly. And that's not the way math works. There must be a prime number that divides it evenly. If none of the finite prime numbers divides it evenly, this means there is another prime that has not been discovered yet. And we are wrong to assume that there is a finite amount of primes. As a result, the other option must be true. There are, in fact, infinitely many primes. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the proof that I have discovered. Thank you, and as always, have a nice day.